Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We hardly realize it, but everything we do is nature. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, everything is nature. Often we translate that in biodiversity, a word of, in our jargon when it is not explained or is not without, is not with context, nobody understands. Five years ago, the European Union did the research, examined the word biodiversity. Do you know what the top answer was? It was washing powder. So we need really to value nature and biodiversity and translate that to people who can understand. So let me take you on the story of the nature of things, if this works. And this works. Doesn't work. Can somebody help me with that? So let me tell you the story about the nature of things. Okay, I will do that. Do you can? Does it work? Okay. Because nature biodiversity is big business. You all know that the rapid loss of biodiversity is causing really severe problems. Every 15 minutes, a species is getting extinct on Earth. And if we take the loss of species combined with all the things of nature that we need to survive, it costs annually, year by year, 3% of the world's GDP. But at the, at the same time, the thing we call nature is a huge opportunity. The Global Health Institute states nowadays that nature can save more lives than the health sector can realize. So the next time you go to the doctor, maybe he says that you better go to spend more time in nature instead of taking an extra pill. Or another example, people like to go out. We are still genetically connected with wildlife. People would like to go out. Every year, eight billion people are going out to wildlife, to find wildlife, spending six bill, $600 billion every year. So the value is there. And how come that we are treated badly, that we are losing the battle? That is because we fool ourselves. A lot of people tend to think that we still can live without nature. And to those people, I would say, try to hold your breath for 10 minutes and tell me then how much nature that you need to survive. Take air pollution. 80% of the world population nowadays is breathing the air quality that is worse than the international standards, causing millions of deaths. Do we accept this? And what about climate change? Do we agree with the model business as usual? Or do we like to change things? At least, I fully agree with President Obama when he stated that we are the first generation who feels the impact of climate change, but we are the last who can do something about that. So, let's not fool ourselves. And can we do that? Everybody knows this lady on the screen, I think. It's Lara Croft. She was designed in 1997 as the first digital baby. The first digital lady that would survive, would change the world. Does, that, does anybody know how she looks like nowadays? How is Lara Croft looking today? Well, I know. I know, she looks like this. She doesn't wear a digital bazooka. She's, bow, she's wearing bow and arrow. She's interconnected 
better than ever before, but she is going forward to basics. We are not going back to basics, but we have to go forward to basics, using all the technologies, all the knowledge, but for the right cause. The right cause is nature, is biodiversity, is the thing we call nature. But how to do so? How to see the change we want to be? How to be the change we want to see? At the picture here, there is a guy standing. It was at the speech of Adolf Hitler in 1943, where he asked the audience to bring the salute. And this guy was not doing the Hitler salute. This picture was discovered 15 years ago from now, and we know who it was. It was August Landmesser, because he was outraged. He was outraged, outraged, and he didn't do the salute. And that's where change starts, often. Often we are outraged, and then we say, come on. Let's do it differently. Let's do it hybridly. Let's do it from the bottom up. See what is happening after a dentist of the United States killed Lion Cecil in Zimbabwe. An entire movement started. See what is happening in the Netherlands and Belgium with the climate court case. An entire movement is happening. And see what is happening with all those Ashoka Fellows, friends across the world who really are tackling problems in the world. Because we have a choice. We have a choice. Do we want energy from hell, like coal and gas? Or do we want energy from heaven, like sun and wind? Which water do we want to drink? Which food do we want to eat? Which environment we want to have? We can do it, and we have to do it now. Stone Age didn't end because we ran out of stones. It was a decision we made. And that's where my story started. To change the nation, to find local solutions for, for global problems with a positive insight. You have to know Martin Luther King never started with, I had a nightmare. He always stayed, I have a dream. Well, this was my dream. Can we do the things we would like to have in the future with wildlife, with nature. And we created a model, what we called the reconnection model, trying to reconnect people, society, with nature. The model is now very successful. We are opening up to the world. We are in the United States, in Asia. We're going to Africa, doing, helping other people, other groups, to try to protect wildlife, but also an interesting connection to make, and it is sustainable growth, because that is what we are doing. In our region, in the northeast of Belgium, we created the first and only national park, together with society. And the impact of the nature of things and the things of nature, we calculated that, like carbon sequestration, uh, water, drinking water, uh, housing, everything was calculated, it's called ecosystem services. The, the, the amount of money that is involved related to one nature project is calculated of, at 191 million euros each year, connecting 5,000 jobs. That is what you see in a region that was hit by the Ford constructor. Nowadays we show resilience, again, with nature because it's the basis of our lives. Kim has asked you to close your eyes. Well, I will ask you again because I would like to end with a small story, a personal story as well. So close your eyes and there I go. When I was a little, little boy of a nine years old, I once captured a ladybird, you know, that little red beetle with the black dots on it, I captured it and I put it in a box of matches. Without food, without water, and without space. Years later, 
this box of matches and the ladybird told me a very important lesson. Let's not put nature in a box. Give, nat give space to nature to give space to ourselves and to the future gen generations. Think globally, act locally and change personally. Thank you so much.